Hello everybody, it's Joe from JLW Films coming at you with another cool video and today I'm going to show you how to create your own lightsaber effects in Sony Vegas and I'm using Sony Vegas 11 so if you have something like Sony Vegas 8 or something lower or higher um, it should all be the same, it should all be there this is a pretty simple effect to make and this is what we're going to be making so obviously it's a little bit slowed down and laggy because of all the effects and all I've done was this one clip I have all my clips together and it's not all fully edited but that's the effect we're going for uh, in this tutorial and as you see I also have the clashes as well <clears throat> and um, I didn't fully complete uh, the blue lightsaber over there but that's the basic idea we're going for and you can make it any way you want uh, depending on what kind of effects you like so I'll be showing you how to create the clashes clash effects and the lightsaber effects. So, um, let's go ahead and cut to... I'm going to go ahead and open uh, a different different project, which is the same thing, except it doesn't have the effects. So here is the exact same thing without the effects. So we're going to start from scratch. The first thing you're going to want to do is obviously drag in your uh, clips. <clears throat> now whether you want sound in your clips or not, because usually it's two sticks hitting. If you don't want that sound, you can easily delete your audio and replace it with audio effects, which is usually what I do. But for the purpose of this video, this is just for fun footage. I haven't done anything, and I didn't have any audio in this video anyways. So the first thing you're going to want to do is go ahead and create a new video track or insert a new video track, or you can just go here to Media Generators, Solid Color, and I always go with white and just drag it into a separate um, video track here. <clears throat> now for right now we're gonna go ahead and click out of this uh, box and you're gonna wanna move this all the way to the top. It should make your project white. So I'm just gonna drag this down to this one clip because that's what we're gonna be working with. Make sure you're all the way at the beginning and now on this clip we're gonna go wanna go to this event pan slash crop in the middle here. <clears throat> And here we are. So this is our event pan slash crop uh, where you can crop an image and uh, actually mask it as well. So that's what we're going to do. So we're going to click this checkbox that say mask and able. Down here is our timeline. So we're going to have to go frame by frame or pretty close to frame by frame to get what we want. Now what we have to do after we've done that is click this little button right here, the anchor creation tool. And after you click that, you should have that on your screen. Now what I usually do, you can do it any way you want, depending on how you want your lightsaber shape to be. I usually have one, two, and it doesn't matter on this first one. I make this kind of house type of selection. As you can see, it then masks that part of it. So I usually have five points for my lightsabers, so I can have a little bit of a point or edge on the top of my lightsabers. So then we're going to click the normal edit tool, click off of that, and what you're going to want to do is click one of the points, and you can drag them to wherever you like. Just like so. Now what I want, now what I like to usually do is make sure this is nice and big. If you have two monitors, like me, I usually just click this button right here, Video Preview on External Monitor. That way I can get a full shot on my other monitor. But if you only have one monitor, just try and make this as big as possible so you can kind of mask it out the best you can. So make sure this is out of the way so you can kind of see where you're going to be putting this. Now this is very time consuming in a way, but if you want that lightsaber effect that you've always wanted, you're going to have to do this. So you're just going to have to just kind of point it out. I'm not going all out on this. I'm just kind of roughly placing it. You can zoom in with your mouse or scroll in with the mouse to zoom in to get get it to move exactly where you want it. It's always important to make that bottom part uh, line up exactly at the very top of the hilt. And I usually like to color my blades so I can easily see where they're at. So I had a pink and red blade uh, that we used for this. Now, if I usually like to make it to where you can see just the edges outside edges of the blade <clears throat> and maybe just cover it up just a little bit you can still see kind of the outline 
or color of the blade, which is okay because which it's going to be covered up by the effects. <clears throat> it just depends how thick you want your blade. Uh, you just kind of have to do it to your liking. So that looks good to me. Now if you look, if we move in later, it's just going to stay still. Now if I add another keyframe around right here, so if I move this up here, like so, I have to zoom out a little bit. You're just gonna want to have to. You're just gonna have to mask each frame you you need to here. And this is kind of a neat feature that Vegas Pro has. So you don't necessarily have to go frame by frame, but if you do want it to be the best possible quality on your lightsaber for tracking wise, you're gonna want to want to go completely frame by frame but if you don't want to use that much time uh, but it will sacrifice some quality see I placed a keyframe further down here there's all these frames in between as you can see it automatically fills in the space to the next frame obviously we're gonna add have to add a couple more frames here because it doesn't match up with the blade at all very well so let me find an instant here when you have those frames where you see the blade, you can just see kind of how you see a nice little outline there. But um, if we, if I find a nice spot here to show you guys, you're going to have instances where the blade looks like it's all over the place. <clears throat> Can't find a good instant on that because we weren't moving too quickly. So if you find a keyframe, let me zoom in really far on this. Sometimes you have to estimate where the blade is. But there'll be instances when you're moving the blade and you can kind of see the a shadowy effect. Like you can kind of see a little bit more of the blade. I can't find an instant of that. Well, if you're lucky, you won't have that, but when you're moving your blade, you'll actually see, like, a wider... You can still see part of the blade, if you know what I mean. You just need to cover up, uh, cover it up, like so. I can't find a good frame that actually uses that. Best one I found is about right here. As you can see how the blade looks a little bit wider... You're going to want to actually do that as well with this and make it look wider. It gives it a nice whoosh effect. <clears throat> so you're going to want it wide like that, for instance, kind of like that. All right. Something like that. Because you just kind of, the blade is definitely your friend. You want to track it as best as you can. So what we're going to do is go to this keyframe. I'm not going to mask every single piece because that would take too long for the purposes of this video. So now we're going to go to the effect part of it. Now to create the lightsaber effect, you're going to need more than one layer. You got your first layer here. And you're going to want to mask it all the way until the clip is finished. And we're going to want to duplicate this track. So you got one on top, one on bottom. They ha and when you duplicate the track, they will both have the same motion. So they will both be the same. <clears throat> so they'll both have the tracking part already automatically on this next clip that you duplicated. So every all the effects and everything travels over to this next one. Now, your top one, you're going to want to keep that white. Now this bottom one, we're going to have to add the effects to this. So what we're going to do is go ahead and go to your video effects. And we're going to go look for, um, let's see if I can find it. You're going to want that glow. Let's see, glow. I'm going to find glow. And just set it at default. You can choose one of those if you want, but 
we'll set it at default. <clears throat> and you're going to want to choose a color. So for me, I'll go ahead and choose red for my color. This is going to be your saber color. Glow percent. We're going to ways. And then if you see the intensity, you can kind of see the glow on it. The suppression, you want all the way down. All right, so you're going to want the glow percent kind of down a little bit. And then the intensity is kind of how thick it is. If you have less intensity, the more it's going to look more like a glow. So you, kinda, you don't want to overdo the intensity unless that's the look you're going for. So I just kind of want a little bit where you can see the red. And it's in daylight, so the color is not going to come out as good in the daylight. <clears throat> so somewhere around there, you can mess with the glow settings. Then on the top, the top one you're going to want to add a Gaussian Blur effect. So on the top one, you'll add a Gaussian Blur. The default it sets at um, fades it out, and we don't want that. So you want these very fade. You don't want too much. So I usually put, I don't know, 40. You might even, you're probably going to have to type these because it's such a small one. You're just adding a little bit of a... Uh, just a little bit of a... Um, blur to the inner part. Now, I think that was a little bit too much, but you get the point. You want to have a little bit of a blur in your blade. Obviously, it's not matched up, so because I didn't finish it all. Uh, that way, it doesn't look too sharp, <clears throat> and you don't want that sharp look to it, and, unless that's the look you're going for. So that's mainly how you create your lightsabers. So after you're finished with, um, say, this blade, and you get all of that blade done, you move on to the next blade, <clears throat> and you can render it first or not, or you can do it all at once. You want to do the next blade, so that would be this blade. Let me open uh, the finished project real, real quick, which is this one. And we're not going to go ahead and save. So here's the finished project. Um, I didn't finish his because I didn't go all the frames. As you can see, I have the clashes on these too. <clears throat> so you go in, and as you can see, I have uh, I've made four, four, uh, two each for light each lightsaber, and then the fifth one is actually the clash. So the clash, depending on how you want to create it, um, it's really up to you. As you can see, I have clash marks here. Now, the clash is the thing you're going to do last, <clears throat> and you can make it any way you want. So, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and delete the clash effect, and you're going to want to add it yourself. So, I took the clash effect out, and I'm going to show you how to do it. So, if we go to media generators, you're going to pretty much do the same thing. We'll go to white. We're going to put it in its own... Here, match it up with these as well. So we'll do the same thing. You have the white in front. We're going to have to do the crop. It's pretty much the same process as the lightsabers. At least this is how I make them. Click mask. And then you create as many key frame points as you do. I usually do about four because the blur will actually um, get rid of it. So the clash isn't always going to be on screen. And that's very um, uh, something that's kind of be a little bit hard for us. So the clash won't always be on screen. So when it's not clashing, you're going to want to make sure these are off the screen. So you cannot see it. So I usually leave it up here. Now we're going to want to go to a spot where we first clash. So here, make sure we find it. Right there is when the impact happens. So when that impact happens, we're going to create a keyframe <clears throat> of uh, go to a keyframe or the one just before it. We're going to want to just tap on this or move it. It doesn't matter. We create a keyframe right before they clash. We want to do that. That way it's not gradually coming onto the screen and it just instantly appears on the screen in the next frame, <clears throat> if that makes sense. So you're going to want to make two keyframes here. So you, I usually put each point on each corner of the clash here. 
So corner here, corner there. And then we can see what it looks like on the next frame. They're still connected, so we're going to want to keep it. You can adjust it if you want the adjust it a little bit if you want to. They're still connected. Now when they get let off, this keyframe, we need to take it back off cuz now the clash is ended. Now you're going to have to do this. This one won't take as long as the lightsabers, so the clash effects are also optional. <clears throat> now, another thing is which lightsaber, how do you do it, you know, when uh when you uh you know which ones should be on top and stuff that actually does not matter <clears throat> when you add the clash effects see Jonathan which is him the bald guy is in front right there i'm my lightsaber supposed to be in front right there but his is in front that's not a big deal i mean you can do, work on that if you make it exact if you want to but it's just a little more work if you add the clash effect it really does not matter in my opinion it turns out just fine now if you can see Here's our clash, clash right there, and then we'll add another one there. Now another thing that we, uh, I wanted to go over with is, see where it goes behind Jonathan's head right here? <clears throat> I'm going to actually look at this, if I can find which one is his. Yep, this is his. Now if we go to where his lightsaber is behind his head here, you actually have to create two separate um, beams here. That way you can mask it around his head. That way it's not in front of his head. <clears throat> Those shots are a little bit tricky. <clears throat> and you have to get that down. So this keyframe, and you can make them, as you can see, it's not there on the keyframes before it. You can actually delete it in each keyframe. Say you just need it in that one keyframe. Just add it. And then by the next keyframe, you can actually delete it or when it's not behind his head, see I deleted it on this keyframe. Once you delete it and it creates a keyframe, it'll actually delete that. And you can also use that with the clash as well if you wanted to, but I always just did, made it off screen. <clears throat> but you can also de have it deleted on a certain keyframe too, uh, if you wanted to create the clash that way. But if you delete it, this is what, um, if you have no none at all, um, you're just going to have that white screen, so I actually think it is necessary to have um, that, just have it off screen and stuff. Alright, so I'm just showing you one clash here. Now, to create the clash effect, um, we pretty much just need to go to um, uh, video effects. Just add a Gaussian blur to it. If we add a Gaussian blur, as you can see, now I don't want, I still want it to cover up. Now you want to make it to where it doesn't look like a uh, square like we had it. Like so. And then if you want to go even further into it you can also go to add a glow as well. I've noticed that some glows kind of maybe have like a yellowish type tint to it. And some Star Wars movies. So you can add a little bit of color in there if you wanted to as well. Add a little bit of a glow effect. That's up to you. I don't usually add much of a glow effect to it, but you can. It doesn't look too bad. Now if you have those really big close-up shots, say on this one, where they're clashed together, you're going to want to have it pretty bright, a lot br bigger and brighter than usual. But it's up to you on just how you want, what kind of look you're going for. But as you can see, there's a nice little clash effect with a yellow type thing. Or you can make the color kind of purple if you want to have red and blue. And probably make a little kind of a purple color. So um, that's pretty much it for that. If you have any questions or comments down below, just, just be sure to ask them. And I'll try and respond to you the be as best I can. So if there's any questions or anything I did not cover of something else, that's pretty much your lightsaber effects. Um right there in a nutshell so um, have fun creating your lightsabers and um, again if you have any questions let me know in the comments hope you enjoyed this video I will see you guys in the next one stay tuned and goodbye